Hello, friends. I'll be with you all in just a second. And uh, we have no sound on Facebook. So hang on here. Testing. Now we have sound on YouTube. Let's see if we can get the same thing going now. Facebook. Hello, friends on YouTube. Um, my, 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 this is aggravating. All the technology, everything is correct, I promise. That means I have a piece of equipment that is malfunctioning. All right, I'm going to, have to go with ambient sound on Facebook. So Facebook friends, we're going with ambient sound. YouTube friends, we're going with microphone sound. Again, sorry for that horrible quality. Hello, Uncle 60. Sorry, sometimes just broadcasting on two, two things at the same time, two platforms. Boy, for the boys, eh? All right, well, and you can see almost what I'm doing here. There, doing that lovely German Shepherd portrait for a friend of mine canvas. Facebook, do we have sound? Yeah, we do. So Facebook, again, I'm sorry, you guys are running on... Let's get going then. I'll just proceed with uh, 83. <laughs> Starting, I have to look at the number. <laughs> I just wrote it 10 minutes ago. And uh, it has passed away as I understand it. This a posthumous portrait. Is that the right terminology? Be watching. The ransom children are watching. And I debated a little bit about exactly how to start this particular painting because I'm not in the habit of yet of doing the abstract paintings underneath portraits. I would like to get to that point eventually, but I'm not there yet. But because this particular landscape in the background, I just said, okay, then I'll, I'll do the, back, the abstract because of the uh, abstract. I've actually been meditating lately, haven't done anything about it, just thinking. I've been thinking about actually doing some portraits, people portraits, that is, with this crazy abstract stuff in the background. 
and it's not that I'm, not that I lack the what the courage to do such a, to do such a crazy thing. It's that uh, people are not accustomed. So I, I can't. Uh, I don't feel like I can charge somebody for a portrait if I'm until. Anyway, do you know what I mean? I have to be conservative on commissions because people expect to get what they expect. Anyway, so I will. I look forward to graduating to that someday. All right, now let's proceed with some. And I think I'm going to do something very unusual. Usually in the in the early stages of acrylics, I don't use um, brown paint at all. But give me just a second. Let me see if I can pick up any uh, Facebook friends. That is so strange. Hmm. Hang on a second. Let me let me relaunch this. Oh, I just got paint all over my. Forgive me, just a second, Facebook friends. Let me, I mean, YouTube friends. Did you, that's right, Uncle at 60. You just did a, a uh, German Shepherd portrait. I saw it briefly. It, sorry, it flew by one time. So I'm, I'm right behind you. Ratio. And I'm just, let me see. I don't want it exactly, even in my, in my reference over here, the, the dog's head is exactly in the center. I think, I think I'd rather not. Now I can't decide if I want the dog slightly to the right. I feel like I don't. I feel like I want him slightly to the left. So fortunately, <laughs> all I'm doing is adding to the abstraction at this point. Nothing lost. Just going to add some color to that. Ooh, that was nice. Let's do some blue. All right. blue that was just a last second thought let's let's try this again now with the, with the head just slightly I don't, I don't. my client for whom I uh, am doing this I sent them my my Photoshop sketch yeah, that's better. That's better. Whew. And in the Photoshop sketch, um, I have the dog right dead center. He's, no, he's actually slightly to the left. Good. Okay. Because now I'm worried about, oh, wait a minute. They, they sort of approved, so to speak, if you will, of the dog being in the center. But no, actually, the dog is ever so slightly. All right. I also am thinking that, yeah, I'm going to raise the uh, the horizon in the Photoshop sketch. It just almost exactly in the center, and that's not that's not too cool either. So let's raise the horizon slightly.
We good? Well, hello, Sid the Myth. <laughs> wow. A Westie portrait. I'm more rage working on a Westie portrait commission. Ha, how fun. That's great. So I'm really bringing up the rear here. All you guys are doing pet portraits. And I just got the memo. <laughs> Actually, I just got the job, so. But all I can do, it's all. <laughs> unless you do paintings on purely on spec, which is, <laughs> I try to avoid that if at all possible. <laughs> I want to, I want money, man. <laughs> I'm sure, just as all of you do. <laughs> all right, I do have some Facebook people watching now, maybe. There we go. All right. Hello, Facebook friends. I'll have you guys up. Hello, Gwendolyn. Good to have you here. Eight people are watching, and some of you have said hi. Let me just take a quick. So the, the dog said it's definitely at an angle. About like that. And at a very slight, turned ever so slightly to our right. Can you see the picture? No, you can't. Here, let me move you over a little bit so you can see it. Hello, Jeremy. Good to have you guys watching with me. Now, just with that little bit of, of Ruffian. <clears throat> Let me see, how can I do this? Okay, I'm going to put the, the photo down underneath. Hello, 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 Karen Pearson. Good to have you watching as well. I'm going to see if I can use a forceps, <laughs> uh, proportional divider. From bottom of chin to top of ear, let's see what that does. Oops, not quite. See, the problem with the proportional divider is you're only allowed so many so many settings. Let me change that from the bottom teeth to the hmm. That would make his head quite large. Let's see how how big is the bottom of his bib. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's try that again. I wish I could put this up where you guys can see it. And now that I'm using this, I thought, oh, I should have mounted this on a stiff surface because it's flopping in the breeze. Doesn't work very well. Okay, top crown of head to the bottom. I'm calling that his bib. There's probably a real name for it. Let's see if that comes out. Yeah, that comes out about right. So while this paint is still dry then, I'm going to start making some marks with pencil. Okay, so crown of head to uh, to the bottom of his lips. <laughs> Forgive me, you dog lovers. I know they're not called lips. What are they called? <laughs> the black lip, dog lips. <laughs> what, <laughs> what are dog lips actually called? They're not lips. At least, I think that's correct. They're not called lips, but there you go. My ignorance is showing. Teeth, though, I know they're called teeth. <laughs> teeth, I, I got that, got, got teeth right. You know what? This. 
not having this piece of paper mounted on a, on a, even on a clipboard, I'm just discovering it's like, ooh, that's a bigger, bigger problem than I thought. Okay, so that's the line between his eyes. Pupil to pupil. space between the ears. Whoa, there we go. So let me do that again. Space between the ears. I've mentioned, so this is called a proportional divider. And a wonderful, simple, very simple tool and very, in, very inexpensive manufacturing. As you can see, it's made out of plastic. This white here is tape that I have stuck on. In fact, it's more than one layer of tape on these to make them stiffer. One of the uh, downsides of these cheap proportional dividers is that in handling them, like as I'm handling them, it's a little bit too easy to, um, so that's tip of ear to tip of ear is about that far. A little bit too easy to, to bump them um, let's go for a height of the ear. So my tape, my tape is my attempt to try to make them a little bit more stable. You can buy more expensive ones, I think, I think. I remember seeing them somewhere, sometime, you know, made out of metal or something. But I don't have any. Let's do now, let's do width of head right at the eye. One of the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Requirements, I guess, if you're going to use a proportional divider because there's only this many holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different holes. And depending on where you set that, once you set the ratio, you're stuck and you can't, you, you don't have the option to, um, like it, you can't do in between the holes. So you pretty much have to use the proportional dividers. Um, whoops, let me, from the get go, you can't, you can't introduce them into your, uh, drawing process late because your ratio will be off. Does that, make, does that make sense? So that's why today I have introduced the use of, okay, so that's the bottom of his muzzle. That's his top lip. <laughs> so that's why I introduced the use of um, the width of his, this, um, right at the beginning of the process. Top of head two. And I... Uh, let me point out again, especially if there's anybody new watching me, that uh, the use of a pencil Whoops, we lost our Facebook people. Isn't that strange? Let's try it again. Um, the use of pencil is quite unconventional. Oh, well, Facebook, I mean, YouTube, you guys are chatting up a storm. Wow, Marae just finished a Wheaton Terrier. Hello, GIF. <laughs> Thank you. So... Good, I'm glad that you're on YouTube and not on uh, Facebook, GIF. I printed off the GIF, I don't, you can't, I haven't showed these yet. I have the two separate photos that you sent me. 
and I'll actually be go when it comes to painting. I'll be looking at that that photograph. This is a composite, and therefore not as precise as that. Anyway, thank you. I'm sorry for my long delay in getting who have control of their schedule <laughs> because I do not. I absolutely do not. So I got blown out of the water. I've got a, a man working on building um, storage in our uh, in our attic today. That, that interrupted me for a good two hours. Outside, outside bottom of ear. Ears at the widest point are about like that. Oh, so I was saying that this use of pencil, uh, by no means a conventional. Um, it's just, I, I use pencils in my normal work, my normal having a lot of trouble with our Facebook friends. So sorry about that, gang. Um, so unconventional use of pencil. That's all I'm going to say. It's unconventional. I will be re repeating, if you will, I'll be repeating all of these marks in just a little while um, in paint. Gif, what's, I forget, what's your dog's name? And I understand he's no longer, he or she, he or she, he's no longer with us, is that correct? So this is a in, in memoriam portrait. I believe, of a very special family pet. Is my memory correct there? I see all oh, the canines are that far apart. Let me double check that. The outside of his canines. In fact, just for, again, for you regulars, it's actually quite unconventional for me to use to to draw even a portrait um using any kind of mood <laughs> for some reason i was just in the mood to, to say okay rather than sweating straining to to uh, make corrections to this dog portrait let's let's just whoops 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 let's just go How wide is the butterfly? Did Gif get back to us? Sheba, that's right. Thank you, Gif. And it's a her. Okay, she, <laughs> Sheba, really incredible dog. Oh, wow, give your mom quite a few litters. No kidding. So Sheba had many puppies herself. And how deep is the Got that about right. And she's been gone how long? Is this a recent loss or are we going back a ways? Some gifts, the modifications I've made to the sketches. Uh, in this sketch, the horizon was a little too close. Now, hang on, Ken. I don't want it exactly at eye level. At the dog's eye level. Yeah, so I'm actually going to move it back down the horizon, back down a little bit. Well, my goodness, you guys. Very sorry about Facebook. We lost them that, that camera completely. All right, I'm going to put the the proportional divider and the pencil down for a while and go back to sort of old-fashioned painting, old-fashioned 
look and copy kind of painting. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to turn, turn some things off here. Reboot, reboot. Can't go back and try to pick up our... or uh, Facebook friends. Okay, back to some long-handled, small-ish brushes. Now, I need to be thinking, is this, is this really where I want Sheba's head in, in uh, proportion to the, to the whole canvas. Is this really where, because if I'm going to move her, I want to do it now. So let me, let me sketch her in. Yeah, I think that's good. Let me do a little more and continue to make that judgment. Is this where I want, you know, on the canvas. I think it is. I want, our, I want us, the viewers, to be looking up slightly. So in other words, um, I want Sheba's eyeballs, pupils, slightly above the horizon line, which I've just moved down to here. Because that will give her a more regal, majestic, a lofty look, which is what we want to ennoble this pet, this faithful faithful friend, as in man's best. Sounds like she was a woman's best friend too, a uh, gift. <laughs> I think I got that right. Oh my goodness, she just died a month or two ago. Oh my goodness, so this is, we're talking fresh. We're talking fresh loss here. Well, bless your heart and bless your mom's heart. Okay, wow. Well, Lord, help me do a good job in honor, to honor this beloved pet. I bet some of the rest of you guys who maybe do pet, pet portraits more often than I do, eh? I would imagine that I would imagine that pet portraits after the pets have gone is not terribly uncomfortable. If I, uh, uncomfortable, uncommon. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. I bet that I bet it's not terribly uncommon. I bet I would imagine. Again, you guys who do this pet thing more often than I do, right? We have a. We have not a painting, but indeed we have a uh, photograph of our of our most special uh, pet. You know, when our when our kids were very young, we got their we got the golden retriever. Let me make sure I'm turning on the right camera here. And uh, the, that dog. Abby was with us um, until they were all either in college or through college. Yeah, and so we have a photograph of her still to this day, just like all the rest of y'all. A nice little black and white, artsy black and white photograph of her in the den. And that's the only kind of pet Nancy and I are going to have. <laughs> We can jump in the car, lock the door behind us. We don't need to feed, we don't need to kennel. No shots, no, no nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving all you dog lovers crazy. <laughs> I know I am. I'm doing it on purpose. I'm being provocative on purpose. I love, I like, I like, I like, in fact, I'm so weird, I like dogs and cats. How about that? So. But I only like other people's dogs and cats. I don't want any. The closest thing we have to pets is we feed birds on our back porch. And that just suits us just fine. <laughs> we don't want any more burden than that. 
But I know that we're not like everybody. Not everybody's like us. We have a, our son, our oldest son, out, out in Arizona. He and his wife are both inveterate dog lovers. They had three, maybe one time for a short time, even four. I don't remember. They had three for a long time. Now they're, I don't think they're down to one. But anyway, they, uh, they wouldn't be without a dog. So there you go, to each his own, eh? Right, let's see if I can get... Uh, Oh, now I'm missing uh, now even our um, Lost our Facebook, I mean, lost our YouTube feed. My goodness, we are in bad shape today. launching again it says we have people watching on YouTube I appreciate that I'm very sorry for the bad uh, broadcast quality today it says we're broadcasting and it says we have people watching but my monitor has completely disappeared on us This is going to be an oil painting, by the way, GIF, if you're still watching. I didn't mention that yet. This is going to be an oil painting, and at the moment, I am working in acrylics, which is my normal acrylics first, oil second. Bear with me just a second again, trying to get, go and pick up our, now I'm, I'm losing both Facebook and, <laughs> oh well, um, anyway, yes, as I said, this is acrylics, I start in acrylics and then I'll graduate to oils and one of the common questions is, why do you do that? And I answer that in different ways depending on who's asking the question. All right, so, but most of you understand. Acrylics are water-based. They dry very quickly. So what's the advantage of using acrylics? They dry very quickly, which means you can, thereby, you can slap down uh, several... Uh, rebooting my iPad now. It's just Reboot City around here today.
All right, well, it says Aslan, you're still with us, and Emiliano, oh, you're both still with us. All right, so the, I was saying, why do I start in acrylics and finish in oil? Well, the, I'll start with the finishing, finishing oil. Why do I finish in oils? Well, that's easy, um, because oils are the easiest, most malleable, adjustable. They're a finesse, they're a, they are a refined and finesse instrument or tool, whereas acrylics are a very blunt instrument. Now, there are people out there, in fact, <laughs> I would be one of them if I chose, if I were to choose as, say, uh, John Poon, who developed a, an, you know, a, an allergy, reactions to oil products. John Poon, world-class oil painter, um, developed a, a reaction to oil paint, so he switched to acrylics. Okay, so there are some people out there, we call them masters, who can paint very well with acrylics, but I, I know I'm sounding going to be a little bit harsh here because I, I just, okay, if you're painting for fun, you can use whatever the heck tools you want to. You can use knitting needles and you don't have to paint a lick. You understand? I don't want to ruin your fun. But if you want to paint better, <laughs> some of you, um, and for some reason this seems to apply more often to women than to men, I, I seem to run into many women who feel like acrylics are easy. The reason they feel easy is because they're water-based and water comes out of your faucet. That's why they seem easy to you. But it is precisely at that point that their easiness um, disappears. Uh, oils are much, much, much easier than acrylics. And uh, you don't have to believe me, but I'm here to tell you the truth. So, um, so I start out with uh, acrylics because they dry quickly so you can slap down layer 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 very quickly but they're a blunt a very crude rude and blunt instrument compared to uh, oils which are much much more finessed so uh, that's why I start with acrylics because I want a blunt instrument that I can slap down fast like as you see me doing here and then you want me to switch <laughs> to oils for the for the perfect texture, color, brush stroke, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's why. In fact, if, ironically, I didn't mean for this to be the case, but ironically, what you see right here is a pretty good example of, of the why, why of uh, acrylics. Because the image that I have on the painting, quite by accident, I didn't, I didn't do this so I could make a point, but the image that, that Sheba's head, as it exists in the state that it's in right now, is you can tell, well, you can tell the German, German shepherd uh, with something in its mouth, but it's a very rude, crude, and, right, perfect for acrylics. Now, can acrylics be finessed? Yes, they can. As I said, John Poon can do it. If I had to, I could do it. But, you no, know, anybody that does, and I know s several people that do hyper-realism, in acrylics and bully for them, but they're they're very much fighting an uphill battle. Anyway, I, and I, the only reason I go on about it that is because I always have a heart for those of you who want to be better painters than you are, and you're still perhaps languishing, if you will, under the illusion or delusion that that acrylics are easy, and that's okay. And you, you're only having probably only doing this to have fun, so you can do whatever you want. But uh, if you want to know the truth, which is what I feel inclined to give you because I'm a teacher, um, oils are much easier. Oils, you can, you can move them around after you put them down. All kinds of things you can do with oils. You can't do with acrylics. All right, let's get off that. <laughs> I spent too long on it already. Still in the business. Hey, we have hello George Wallace and Bonnie Jones Gunter and Jeremy Neff. What brand of fluid acrylics do you recommend? Oh, uh, you had, you threw me off with that last word. <laughs> I thought you were going to say what brand do you use? <laughs> okay, the brand that I use and the brand that I recommend are two very different things. All right, because what I use is cheap Lucas, but they're adequate Lucas Krill. 
studio. I, I don't know if you'd call them a, probably you would call them a student grade um, acrylic paint. That's why to say I recommend them would be misleading. But I do use them. Okay, why, 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 why? Well, that's a good question. Let me explain why, why, why. The reason is because all of my acrylics, so let me, those of you, kind of, uh, they're all in these little pre-mixed leftover food leftover containers, okay? You know, Rubbermaid, uh, Tupperware type product. I'm not, I'm not giving a, I'm, not, I'm just saying generally speaking, you know, a Tupperware, Tupperware, a Tupperware, <laughs> Rubbermaid or Tupperware type of product, okay? Food, grocery store stuff. Those little containers are about 50% paint and 50% medium. That's why I can get away with, away with the cheap paint because I use, well, not always good medium, but I use lots of medium, all right? Um, so there's the answer. It's not what I recommend, it is what I use. So if you do what I do and you cut all of your acrylics by about 50% um, medium, then you can get by with fairly inexpensive um, acrylics. Does that make sense? Whereas if you want to become an acrylic painter per se, using acrylics and I would I would I would use Golden or Matisse or who knows what else um, a, a good a high quality acrylic paint but I don't want high quality because again because I'm just going to uh, cut all of my acrylics 50% with uh, with the medium now this is a this GAC 100 is more typical this is for outdoor, it's left over from a mural job I did a year ago. Um, you can use really cheap stuff. Jerry Studio Acrylic Medium and Varnish. Forget the varnish part, it's just acrylic medium. And it's adequate. Um, again, it's not what I would, would do you recommend it? Eh, no. <laughs> Does it do the job? Eh, yeah, good enough. Whoops, just lost my... Okay, every, every time I do something like this, I think, okay, half the, all the people who are artists, half of you who are watching me, you say to me and you say to each other and you say to others, I wish I could get looser. Um, <laughs> then I say, well, then just, just, then just do it. Then just do get loose. Stop saying it and do it. Okay, look, I'm painting sky and grass behind Shiva's head. Just not, not to be too mean, by the way, I forgot to put my apron back on after my last step, my last trip away. So hang on just a second. I think I just spattered some more paint on that shirt. I try to, all my clothes have paint on them. I just try to get paint on them at a moderate rate. <laughs> I don't want them to get too much paint too quickly. All right, let's see if I can get a monitor going. All right, let me, at, at, and again, at the risk of being kind of mean, but sometimes mean is what's necessary <laughs> to be a good teacher. Bear with me just a minute, let me turn you guys. There we go. If I were to give you guys a brush and say, I want you to paint the sky behind Sheba's head, you'd have picked up a brush about like this maybe. You'd have held it like, this, stuck it in your blue paint, stuck out your tongue, that's very important, and proceeded to tongue paint. Right? Don't look at me like that. I know who you are. I know that's exactly what you would have done. And what I just, what I just did without thinking about it, I was just painting in my normal way, but you saw what I did, and as I was doing it, I thought, oh my goodness, I hope somebody's paying attention. So I just, I won't do it again because I don't want another, but I went like this. I got blue all over his ears, blue down here, and then it's green, green all over. Okay, so you ask a very good question. What? What? <laughs> Why? Is it, what might be your question. Why did you put blue on top of the dog and green on top of the dog and, 
in a minute, I'll be putting brown on top of the green. In other words, my, uh, or to put it most simply, I don't color in the lines. Um, well, there's a whole lot of reasons for, the, you, could, it, you could express it in many different ways. Why don't you color in the lines? Um, one way, just one way to describe this, the answer to that, the principle behind that, is that it turns out, whether you guys know it or not, but after I tell you, you'll know it. It's just up your job then to believe it. Um, the human eye gets a kick out of seeing little bits of the object that have spilled over into the background and little bits of the background that have spilled over into the object. So, for instance, that right there, that's a barn. Okay, the barn's actually going to go right about here. So why is that down there? Why did I have the color so far? In fact, I'm going to color more out of lines. Why do I color so far out of lines? Very good question. So glad you asked. Again, the reason is because the human eye gets a kick out of seeing little bits of the background that are spilled into the object and the object into the background. So in this case, for instance, the dog is the object and the blue sky is the background. What I'm saying is we like to see blue sky in the brown dog and we like to say brown dog in the blue sky and vice versa. Same thing with red barn, green, green grass. We like to see it. Um, now you can, you, next question you might ask is how come? Why? Now, and I don't know the answer to that. I just know that it's true. Not my job necessarily to understand the whys and wherefores of everything in human existence when it comes to art, but it is my job to know uh, that human beings in fact do enjoy seeing little bits. Now, I do actually have a more sophisticated answer to that question, but I'm not sure when I get into it. It has to do with the way uh, human beings actually and literally do see the world. And um, we, we don't actually see the world or perceive the world the way most of you think we do. For instance, I can prove it. I haven't, I haven't done this little trick in a while, so let's go ahead and do it right now. All right, while I'm painting here, I would like you to take just a second and let's say focus on this line right here, the edge of my canvas that, that goes right up, that abuts this holder on me. So, do you see that line right there? Can you see it? It's a, it's a fairly, um, by the way, did you see I just painted orange dog onto the green grass? Same thing over here, orange dog onto the green grass. Um, there's a butterfly over here. But I'm interrupting myself. Okay, yellow butterfly. Same, same thing, more yellow down here. Yellow dog onto the green grass. Um, all right, you, you were focused on this for, for at least a moment, were you not? Okay, good. You're, you're very obedient. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, well, what you probably don't know is that while you were obediently looking at this line, everything else in your field of vision, so you're either looking right now at a phone or a tablet or a computer. I'm assuming most of you are on a phone screen this big, and it's this far from your face. So it's taking up 10% or less than 10% of your entire field of vision. But for a second there, you squinted it even harder and looked at that line. Everything else in your field of vision, the room you're sitting in, the whatever, wherever, wherever you are, your hands, your, your, your arms, um, a little wisp of your hair catching in, in the you know, that you can barely see in your peripheral vision of there. All those things, they were, uh, most people would say, oh yeah, they were out of focus. N yes, true, they were out of focus, but it goes way beyond out of focus. While you were obediently focused intently on this straight, 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 hard edge line, everything else in your field of vision that you were not paying attention to were not only out of focus, they were wiggling it like the, like the little lady who swallowed a fly, there was w swallowed a spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. Okay, while you're focused on this, your eyes, everything else in your field of vision was wiggling and jiggling and tickling, interposing, jumping around, moving. It was doing all kinds of crazy shenanigans, okay? Um, because that's how your eyes work. I know this because it's how my eyes work too. Um, so as we go through life, 
what, what percentage? 99% <laughs> of everything in our field of vision. I'll just use, that's not a scientific number, but probably close enough. From the day you are born, well, you can't see much in the day you're born, but anyway, essentially, so to speak, from the day you're born to the day you die or to the day you go blind, one or the other, 99% uh, of the world that you're perceiving is wiggling, jiggling like the spider inside the old lady. Wiggling, jiggling, and tickling inside your head. That's how you perceive the world. 99% world. of what you see is wiggling, jiggling, and tickling. Um, the biggest exception to that is actually portrait artists, portrait painters, or any kind of painter, but especially portrait painters, who must learn to, to focus their, their vision, any kind of painter, but especially a portrait painter, um, by sheer dint of, <laughs> whoops, I just put that, I just put that barn in the wrong place. I don't usually erase, but I'm making an exception right there. Um, I'd forgotten that I had moved the horizon up. Let, let's fix that horizon before I go any further. No, I had moved the horizon down. <laughs> now, uh, sometimes there are disadvantages to talking and um, painting at the same time, truly. All right, so you, you and I experience the world wiggling, jiggling. Our eyes are wiggling all the time. And even the stuff that we're not, and the stuff we're not focused on is pixelated, so to speak, is a good modern temp, uh, computer word. Pixelated and moving. It's not static, it's not stable. This is, all this is, is much of what the, uh, the Impressionist, Monet and, and his crowd began to teach the human race 100, 120, 30 years ago. Well, it began to, to experiment in their paintings with how human beings actually, literally, how they perceived the world. And it's not in a, like, for instance, like the people that do super realism, hyper realism, or realistic painting, like, and as you know, I, I, every once in a while, I enjoy doing that as well. Um, but, uh, okay, here we are, the red barn again. In fact, we didn't, I didn't even talk today about why do I do uh, crazy abstract stuff underneath a representational painting. That's another topic. Maybe you'll get back to it. Maybe I won't. doesn't matter. Um, but this is barn over here. All this is just abstract. Okay, one answer to, is because it makes it a better painting. That's... That's all I'm going to say about all that. Anyway, so everything in our field of vision wiggles, jiggles, tickles. Um, so when, boy, I'm, I'm running out of the energy to talk about this. I don't, I don't want to go on at great, 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 great length. So let me try to land this plane quickly. The, the photorealists would say, okay, so I'm going to do a painting just the way we perceive the world so your eye can look at some part of the painting and that part's in focus. And then everything, all the rest of the painting is out of focus. That's the way you experience life. And that is true. The problem is it turns out human beings don't like, I'm being overly blunt, turns out human beings don't like the freedom offered them by photorealistic painting. What human beings like more than that is being manipulated, being steered and directed and influenced by the artist to yes, look here and don't look here or look here more, look here less. And I'm not pointing, I'm not pointing to my camera. I'm, my, my canvas. Anyway, so <laughs> um, uh, I, I didn't. I didn't do a good job of explaining that. That's if if you thought that was interesting but confusing, it was. Um, <laughs> if you if you stick around very long, I will I will hit that topic again. It, I call well, I call my style of painting, I call it abstract realism. And sometimes when I'm being snobby, I call it real painting as, a, as, as in counterdistinction to the hyper-realistic stuff. And I enjoy doing hyper-realistic and it's okay if, if, if that's your authentic calling in life is to do hyper-realistic stuff, more power to you, that's all right. Um, but um, most of the great painters through the la since the Reformation, at least, um, the Rembrandts and the 
John Singer Sargent's and so forth, um, have painted in a messy manner. And either it's because they were bad painters and couldn't do realism, that's what some of you think, or it's because they know something you don't know and that, that's the correct answer. They know something you don't know. Anyway, um, again, I did not answer that. I didn't explain that very well, but I don't have the energy now to fix it. So just I'm going to let that let that dangle, <laughs> let that stay there, and uh, just get on with uh, painting. So the red barn. How I got into that because I was talking about how how I put blue on top of the dog and brown on top of the green and green on top of the dog and orange on top of the green and here red on top of the green. It's, 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 it's a very well thought out process, I guess. That's, that's, how, I'm gonna, that's how I'm gonna land that plane. <laughs> so. Now, if you happen to be new to my channel, and you're not familiar with how my paintings turn out, then you may be indeed deeply confused at this moment. Say, well, I, wait, I don't know why. Why don't you do, why doesn't it look more like Sheba? Well, it will. It will. Trust me. But looking like Sheba is, so to speak, is the easy part. Producing a good painting is the hard part, if you will. All right, I'm going to mix up real quickly some dark, dark black-ish stuff here. Again, still in acrylics, and, and I'm going to hold my, my brush in a horrible, look at this. I only, I only hold brushes, whoops, this way when, uh, when I'm doing portraits, even portraits of a dog. And uh, I only want to get close on Sheba uh, here in, in the acrylic stage. Um, I will get, I just want to get close, close to the right color, close to the right values, close to the right drawing. And, um, and then uh, get perfectly accurate, so to speak, quote unquote, perfectly accurate uh, in oils. Again, painting in acrylics, as I've been doing, allows me to throw down several layers. Now, that would sort of be a moot point were it not for the fact that the layers that I'm, quote unquote, throwing down are almost all transparent, transparent and translucent. That is to say, you can see through them into the under, under layer. So every time I put a layer down, it does not nullify or negate the, the previous layers that I put down. That would be a, a waste of time and energy, in my opinion, if, if every layer just annihilated, so to speak, the layer underneath. That would, that would not be a good good use of, of time, my time. So it is, it is quite essential, if you will, that, that um, I'm using, I am using uh, transparent layers. That's, again, that's quite important, an important distinction. It's already starting to look a little bit like Sheba though, isn't it? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Gift, do you know what kind of butterfly this is? It's familiar. There's not enough of a... 
what do you call an expert in butterflies? <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm not one. <laughs> Nice little notch in in Sheba's color right here on each side. Very nice. Hey, to answer uh, the question that I asked earlier, why why do I let green and blue, so to speak, get into the dog? And why do I let brown from the dog get into the background? Um, a, a real overly simple answer is so that it won't look like Sheba, the dog, is, so to speak, pasted on this background. But they will, they will be mished together in a, in a unified whole uh, through the use of bleeding colors. Yeah, I should have just said that first time, shouldn't I? It's much simpler. I'm going to do uh, just one more layer of white. Hello, Gail Knowles. Hello, David Mercer. Yeah, we do have quite a problem with Facebook sound, don't we? Um, evidently, I have some piece of equipment that is malfunctioning. So I'm going to do one more layer, a little bit of acrylic white and uh, good for you Michael McEwen hello in8x <laughs> yes scary German shepherds that's funny um, so I'm gonna do um, some white and then I'll be ready to move on to oils Um, and before, before I come back, I'm going to uh, troubleshoot our, our Facebook sound problem and see if I can, see if I can fix whatever's going wrong on Facebook. So I'm going to end this broadcast in just a few minutes and then, um, when I come back, I'll be going in into oils and hopefully during the break I can I can find out what's wrong with my with my sound okay with my Facebook sound that is All right, I'm going to stop right there so the acrylics are done. I'm going to, I'm going to end this broadcast and to start another one. So if, you've, if you have subscribed, if you've hit the bell, you will receive a notification when I start the next broadcast. So hope to see you all when I come back. Thanks for watching.
Hello, Monique. It's not too late there yet, is it? 